Here comes a thrilling ride in the fast lane as Ferrari, the powerhouse of Formula One, makes a jaw-dropping move to steal the spotlight from Red Bull's dominance. As the anticipation builds for the upcoming season, Ferrari is already oozing confidence in their yet-to-be-unveiled 2024 car. Team boss Frederick Vasseur dropped hints last weekend, sparking excitement in the racing world. So today, let's dive into the video to understand the secrets and maneuvers that Ferrari has up its sleeve to overshadow the competition. The new Ferrari, the 676, hasn't been revealed yet. We'll have to wait until February 13th to see exactly how it looks. Alfa Romeo's team principal, Frederic Vasseur, mentioned during an interview that the car we'll see at the beginning of the F1 season will be completely different. Let's talk about Red Bull's success in the 2022 World Championship. Red Bull and Max Verstappen are in a great position with only six races left. Max has won two races in a row after the summer break, and even before that break in August, he was already ahead. Charles Leclerc's retirement in France and some strategy issues with Ferrari in Hungary gave Verstappen a significant lead. But why Red Bull is doing so well, especially with their car, the RB18? Over the years, people have noticed that Red Bull is good at developing their cars. This skill often gives them an advantage over other teams in the second half of the season. But is this the only reason why their RB18 car has performed so well in the last five races of 2022? Have Red Bull or Ferrari developed their car more? To find out why Red Bull's RB18 car is performing so well, let's take a closer look at the details. People often think Red Bull is great at improving their car throughout the season, but there's an interesting twist this time. Ferrari, not Red Bull, has improved most during the season. A crucial piece of evidence comes from looking at the rear wing, the part at the back of the car. Ferrari introduced six different versions, including one specifically for the Monza track. In contrast, Red Bull only had three versions, a low-load one, a medium-load one, and a high-load one. Surprisingly, these versions were used for more than four races on similar tracks. Now, let's talk about the floor of the cars, the bottom part. It's a bit more complicated to count the changes here. If we only look at the visible changes, Ferrari and Red Bull made almost the same improvements. So, the evidence suggests that Red Bull's success might not just come from developing the car throughout the season. Ferrari, in fact, seems to have done more in that department. The key is not just in how many changes are made, but also in understanding how these changes relate to the previous version of the car, the F175. As we await the big reveal of the new Ferrari and analyze Red Bull's dominance, it's becoming clear that the story behind their success is more complex than just continuous development. The comparison between the two teams' improvements in different parts of the car provides interesting insights into what makes a winning Formula One car. Red Bull's battle to reduce the weight of RB18. Now, Let's dive deeper into how the teams are tweaking their cars for better performance. One crucial area of focus is the floor, the bottom part of the car. Both Red Bull and Ferrari made changes, but they did it modularly. That means they identified key areas to improve without completely redoing the floor. For Red Bull, this happened at Silverstone for the RB18, and for Ferrari, it was at Paul Ricard for the F175. Interestingly, they didn't make major changes to the central section of the floor, allowing them to update specific parts under the car and around the diffuser. Considering the budget cap, this approach also helps them manage their resources effectively. Red Bull, for instance, has been working on making their car lighter throughout the season. Initially, it was about 15 kWs heavier than the minimum weight required. They started shedding weight around the time of the European races after the initial ones. In Hungary, there were rumors that the RB18 was already at the weight limit. The timing of this weight reduction is significant because it coincides with Red Bull's dominant performance in the last five races. Interestingly, this weight reduction was applied to Verstappen's car, but not his teammate Sergio Perez's. This isn't about the driver's skills. It's a part of the team's strategy. The weight changes seem to have benefited Verstappen more. Lighter components altered the car's behavior, reducing understeer and making it more neutral with a tendency to oversteer. Perez, on the other hand, is feeling the impact more. He's facing challenges with this new setup. Additionally, Verstappen got a bit of special treatment with a new, slightly lighter floor compared to Perez's car. Ferrari bites into details. 
Alfa Romeo's team principal, Vasseur, talks about the changes they've made to the car. Even though they can't have a complete revolution, Vasseur mentions, we will change 95% of the car. Their goal is to improve every little detail for better performance, and the drivers have been part of this process from the beginning. Vasseur is optimistic about the changes, saying, we expect to be faster. He believes the simulator results support this expectation. However, he acknowledges that the real test comes when they compare lap times with Red Bull and other teams. That's when they'll know exactly how much progress they've made. The big question is whether these changes will be enough to compete with Red Bull consistently. Vasseur anticipates the competition will get closer and Red Bull might not be as dominant. Yet, he understands the challenges of working within the budget cap, stating they continue to have the advantage. The true measure of their progress will be revealed as the season kicks off. How are Mercedes and Ferrari chasing Red Bull's F1 top speed advantage? In response to the undeniable prowess of Max Verstappen in overtaking on straights, Red Bull's competitors decided to enhance their cars and wings for improved efficiency, aiming to minimize drag during races. One key player in this race for aerodynamic optimization was Mercedes, whose draggy W13 demanded significant improvement. Despite their efforts, Mercedes arrived at the pre-season test in Bahrain with their W13 still struggling in the speed traps. Analyzing other teams' strategies revealed a trend. Many were adopting medium downforce packages, and some were even experimenting with lower downforce configurations. Unwavering in their pursuit of victory, Mercedes chose a distinctive approach. Throughout the test, they deployed a high downforce rear wing, an approach reminiscent of their strategy from the previous year until a more streamlined version debuted in Miami. Mercedes realized the need for adaptability and unveiled a new lower downforce rear wing for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Although the design might seem familiar, it harked back to a rear wing style used by Mercedes between 2015 and 2018, featuring a spoon-shaped design. The central, deeper portion of the wing produces the performance, while the outer, shorter cord portion blends with the end plate to reduce the drag. This innovative design benefits cars with enhanced downforce and reduced drag. Like Red Bull's strategy, Mercedes exposed the underbelly of their new design to the oncoming flow, resembling a higher downforce wing's central section. Revisiting a strategy employed years ago, the leading edge of the upper flap featured a thicker surface until it met the tip section. This nuanced design, part of Mercedes' rear wing solutions from 2015 to 2018, exemplifies the delicate balance between optimal downforce and minimal drag. The cutout in the upper rear corner of the end plate also returns, serving to help control the tip vortex. Further, in crafting their 2022 wings, Mercedes introduced a clever feature, an interchangeable panel section. This allowed the team to swiftly tweak the wing's performance as needed. The ability to make quick adjustments proved valuable for optimizing the car's aerodynamics according to the demands of different circuits. Deciding on the ideal wing setup involves a delicate balance. Opting for a lower downforce wing boosts speed on straight segments, but may result in compromises during corners. The team must weigh these trade-offs, aiming for the best overall lap performance while considering the impact on tyre degradation over a race stint. As the Bahrain Grand Prix approached, Mercedes faced a crucial decision. In the final practice session, FP3, George Russell's W14 showcased the high downforce rear wing while Lewis Hamilton's car sported the new lower downforce variant. The team was still in the process of assessing the impact on lap times and tyre wear. In the end, the numbers fell in favour of the new design, leading George Russell and Lewis Hamilton to enter qualifying and the race with the lower downforce variant. Ferrari's Rear Wing Evolution Ferrari's meticulous approach to pre-season testing involved a comprehensive examination of two rear wing specifications. The newer version showcased significant changes, notably the shift from a double mounting pillar arrangement to a single pillar. The team conducted a brief test during free practice, acknowledging the flexibility observed at the pillar but remaining committed to further trials. The transition to a single pillar design prompted a careful consideration of trade-offs. 
The bulkier design, counteracting increased load, featured a crescent-shaped mounting wrapping around the exhaust. A departure from twin pillars, the single pillar met the DRS pod in a swan neck arrangement, influencing physical and aerodynamic aspects. Ferrari's adoption of a teardrop-shaped flap pivot added a unique aerodynamic trick, showcasing a commitment to innovation. Red Bull's floor edge revolution. In response to significant regulation changes affecting the floor's edge, Red Bull emerged with a distinctive solution, setting them apart from their previous design and the rest of the field. The forward section of the floor and the edge wing took on a twisted C-shaped profile, creating winglets on either side of the cutout. So, what do you think of the brutal move by Ferrari to overshadow Red Bull's dominance? Comment below and subscribe for more.